Throughout African history, some women have dominated in a man's world. Some of them were black queens loved and respected for their leadership. These women played significant roles in the continent's history, most especially during the pre- and post-British colonial era. Here are the 11 most powerful queens in the history of Africa. 11. Queen Hatshepsut Queen Hatshepsut is one of the most powerful black queens and was the fifth pharaoh of Egypt. Hatshepsut married her half-brother, Thutmose II, at 12 and became a queen. When Thutmose II died, Hatshepsut had to act as pharaoh. In order to establish herself in the Egyptian patriarchy, she took on traditionally male roles and was depicted as a male pharaoh with physically masculine traits and traditionally male garb. Hatshepsut's reign was a period of great prosperity and general peace. During her rule, she expanded Egyptian trade and oversaw ambitious building projects, most especially the Temple of Deir el-Bari in western Thebes, where she was buried. An attempt was made to remove her from official accounts of Egyptian historiography. Her statues were destroyed, her monuments were defaced, and many of her achievements were ascribed to other pharaohs. 10. Queen Nefertiti Queen Nefertiti, the wife of King Akhenaten, is another well-known ancient queen. With her husband, they reigned during the wealthiest period of ancient Egyptian history. They shifted the viewpoints of religion and influenced the practice of monotheism, the belief in only one god. Nefertiti is also best known for her painted sandstone bust, which became a global icon of feminine beauty and power. Nefertiti and her husband were known for their radical overhaul of state religious policy, in which they promoted the earliest known form of monotheism, Atenism, centered on the sun disk and its direct connection to the royal household. With her husband, she reigned at what was arguably the wealthiest period of ancient Egyptian history. Some scholars believe that Nefertiti ruled briefly as the female king Nefenefruaten after her husband's death and before the ascension of Tutankhamun, although this identification is a matter of ongoing debate. If Nefertiti did rule as pharaoh, her reign was marked by the fall of Amarna and relocation of the capital back to the traditional city of Thebes. Some scholars believe that Nefertiti ruled briefly as the female king Nefenefruaten after her husband's death and before the ascension of Tutankhamun. Although this identification is a matter of ongoing debate, if Nefertiti did rule as pharaoh, 9. Queen Amina of Zeria, Queen Amina Mohammed, is the first queen of a male-dominated Hausa society, who expanded the territories of North African Hausa. Diverging from her father's peaceful rule, Amina harnessed her arsenal of military skills with the Zazao cavalry and became their leader. Amina attended an official state business meeting while sitting on her grandfather's lap. She was caught wielding a dagger by her grandmother when she was a child, which indicated her natural abilities as a warrior. Although she was required to participate in daily activities with her mother as a young woman, Amina also trained vigorously with a royal guard. Amina was 16 when her mother became queen and named her Magajia or heir apparent to the throne. Suitors lined up daily, bringing gifts, including offers of ten Makama slaves. It is recorded that the Emir of Kano offered her 50 bags of white and blue cloth, 50 female slaves, and 50 male slaves, but Amina refused to marry or have children. Amina's parents died in 2566, and her brother Karama was named the King of Zazao through tradition. During Karama's reign, Amina became the lead warrior of the kingdom's army. For ten years, her successes across the region gained her a fierce reputation and personal wealth outside of her royal family connection. In 1576, Amina was crowned Queen of Zeria after her brother's death. In her efforts to provide safe passage for Hausu traders, Queen Amina expanded the kingdom's borders through a series of successful strategic battles within three months of her taking the throne. Her military innovations included introducing protective armor to the Zazao army. Queen Amina personally led her army of 20,000 soldiers, 
conquering towns to the north and south in the Noob and Jukun kingdoms, and through Kasash and Borchai, a region located in what is now known as the Middle Belt of Nigeria. During her reign, Zaria dominated trade routes connecting Western Sudan with Egypt to the northeast and Mali to the north. In the custom of the era and region, Queen Amina collected tributes from conquered cities and regions, including Kola nuts and male slaves. Although she did not begin the practice, Amina built walls around conquered cities and her military camps in conquered regions. Many of those walls still stand in contemporary northern Nigeria. They are known locally as the Ganuwar of Amina, which in the Hausa language means Amina's walls. After being appointed as ruler in 1576, she returned to the battlefield and fought to her death in 1610. Historians described Queen Amina as one of the real rulers born in the mid-16th century. 8. Queen Kandeg When he attempted to conquer Queen Candace's land in 332 BC, she arranged her armies strategically to meet him and was present on a war elephant when he approached. After he assessed the strength of her armies, Alexander withdrew from Nubia, heading to Egypt instead. 7. Queen Ya Asantua of the Ashanti Empire Queen Ya Asantua was queen mother of the Ashanti Kingdom, now part of modern-day Ghana. She presided over the Golden Stool, which established power, culture and stability within the land. As queen mother, she held the second highest position within the Ashanti Empire. Asantua is among the powerful black queens because of her leadership and advocacy for women in power, challenging archaic gender roles. 6. Queen Njinga Mbandi, Angola Njinga Mbandi was the queen of Ndongo and Matamba. She took power when Angola Mbandi, her brother, died in 1624 and distinguished herself as an exceptional leader. Her military tactics and espionage her ability to forge many strategic alliances, and her knowledge of the trade and religious issues helped her to resist Portugal's colonialist aspirations. 5. Queen Mormi Isle Eif Kingdom, Nigeria Queen Mormi was a legendary Yoruba queen and a folk heroine. She was a courageous queen who contributed to the liberation of her kingdom from the neighboring Ugbo Kingdom. During a period in the ancient Yoruba land, the people of Isle Life were enslaved due to numerous wars and defeats by a neighboring tribe called the Igbo people also referred to as the Forest People. These Igbos have no relation with the contemporary Igbos of modern-day Nigeria. During Mormi's reign as queen, they faced the prolonged issue of Igbo raiders dressed completely in raffia leaves, disrupting and looting markets in Ife, and selling the people of the kingdom into slavery. The Igbo were perceived as an unbeatable enemy, as they were not only seen as spirits, but were thought to have carried a supernatural source of power, which put them at an inequitable advantage. They were even referred to as demigods by some due to their frequent raids on the people of Eif. As a result, the Eif people attempted to defeat their adversary by appealing to their ancestors through sacrificial offerings, but their efforts were futile. Mormi was a patriot and couldn't bear to see how unhappy her people and her husband, the king, were and so devised a plan to resolve their pending issue. She visited the spirit of the river Esimirin and due to her abundant riches, she hastily vowed to make the greatest sacrifice possible if she could discover the strength of the forest people and save her kingdom. As advised by the goddess Esimirin, the queen selflessly and willingly offered to be captured as a slave by the raiders, which she accomplished successfully the following day by posing as a trader in the market. Not only was Mormi fearlessly brave, but she was also a stunning woman, which enabled her not just to entice her adversaries, but also to unravel the mysteries surrounding their strength. Her beauty drew the attention of the Igbo leader, who made her one of his wives. She remained there for an extended period of time, spying on her adversaries and learning their ways of life, with a particular interest in their raffia-clad masquerades. Mormi was a brave and beautiful woman. To deal with the attacks from the Igbo on her people, the Igbo warriors took her as a slave. Because of her beauty, 
she married the Igbo ruler as his anointed queen and learned about the secrets of her new husband's army. She then escaped to Isle Ife and revealed her intel to the Yorubas, who subsequently defeated their enemies in battle. 4. 